1947 second quarter. Three years after D-Day, the ships of the Armada lay rusting on the beaches of Normandy. And three years after their liberation, the people honored a great sacrifice. War had long since passed, but still they were guilty to be tried. Case by case, the Allied judges disposed of the Gauleiters, the Jew baiters, the jailers of concentration camps. Justice was slow, but sure. War had long since passed, but still there were teeth to draw. The German fortress of Heligoland, its guns and submarine pens were blasted by high explosives. So much for Germany's past, but what of Germany's future? After 44 sessions, the Moscow Conference of Foreign Ministers broke up. On all the main issues, German economic unity, reparations, demilitarization, discussion had brought deadlock. Deadlock between the East and the West. Many began to ask, when would the nations find unity? United States Secretary of State, Mr. Marshall, said, I come from a young country, and therefore an impatient country. And possibly our uh, approach to such momentous conferences as these uh, is too impatient. However that may be, our uh, purpose is utterly sincere in our frankly admitted impatience to see that peace comes to the world, to men's minds, and comfort to the people of Europe who are suffering so much. Britain's Foreign Secretary, Ernest Bevin, took a long-term view. I ask the British people to have patience, as we've had to exhibit. We shall reconcile our differences, and I always remember in this task of making peace, we're not working for a day, but for generations to come. In the battle-torn towns of France, rebuilding was a question of manpower, bricks and mortar. But the rebuilding of France's political structure was another matter. Since the end of the war, the Republic's various parties had fought for power, had united, had parted to fight once more. And while the parties wrangled, economic troubles grew worse. In Paris, the strike of transport workers added to the nation's labor problems. Without national unity, France was drifting into chaos. In Strasbourg, thousands cheered their war leader, General de Gaulle. In a fighting speech, the general demanded a break away from the whole French party system. Le désespoir national, la république sera l'efficience, la liberté et la concorde, ou bien elle ne sera rien que des illusions et impuissance en attendant. While the general called for total unity, the general supporters called for total power, for the general. Construise la France nouvelle. Vive la République, vive la France. If France once again turns to General de Gaulle, 
Will she find unity or the evils of dictatorship? Flying visit to Britain came America's Mr. Wallace, the man whose views and actions caused strong feelings throughout the entire United States. His host, New Statesman's editor, Kingsley Martin, asked Mr. Wallace... Well, I take it, Mr. Wallace, that what you really come for is to bring a message about peace for the people of England. Kingsley Martin, the progressive people of America want the people of Britain and the people of Western Europe to know that they're going to do everything they possibly can to see that the abundance of America is used for the peace of the world and not as a means of World War III. Back on a lecture tour in the United States, Mr. Wallace resumed his attacks on his country's foreign policy a policy he termed a one-way route to war. And those who listened wondered, was this the voice of an alarmist or that of a true prophet? Day by day, American supplies arrived at the ports of Europe food, machinery, and equipment, raw materials for reconstruction. From its abundance, the new world brought relief to the old. But for full reconstruction, a devastated continent called for more. For all the materials that could be supplied, all the food that could be spared, only a vast increase in outside aid could save Europe from disaster. Backed by President Truman, Mr. Marshall called upon Europe to state her needs, to draw up her own program for assistance, her own program for recovery. In Europe, the Marshall Plan met with immediate response. At Mr. Bevin's instigation, the foreign ministers met in Paris. But at the conference table, Mr. Molotov could not agree to the Anglo-French proposals, and so Russia withdrew. But Britain and France went ahead. Indeed, time was vital. For how long could suffering be endured? 